in, in the States. Um, uh, w uh, welcome to, to this presentation of uh, El Camino de Santiago, uh, uh, walking El Camino de Santiago with Mountain Sa Travel Sobek. Um, I am uh, um, the main guide uh, since a few years ago of this um, Camino de Santiago for, for Sobek. And let uh, let uh, introduce myself. Um, my name is Eric Perez. I have been uh, uh, with uh, Mountain Sovek since 1988, um, um, working in different guiding, in different uh, um, hiking, uh, different hikes all along, mainly Spain, uh, Greece. I've been also with the company uh, guiding. It was an exciting time uh, in the Himalayas and uh, in South America, in Patagonia. I obviously am from here, from Spain, and I speak uh, Spanish. That was the reason why uh, I work a few years in Patagonia. Um, and I am from northern Spain, from the part of Spain that is uh, close to the Pyrenees and France. Um, in the North Atlantic, what we, what, what you know as uh, the Bay of Biscay, and I was born in a small uh, area of this uh, of this part of Spain called Asturias. It's a region, the equivalent of uh, your states, um, and um, which, by the way, is very close and is very related to El Camino de Santiago. El Camino de Santiago for me um, is uh, something I was uh, a child and I could uh, uh, listen about it every day because uh, in this area uh, we all know about this uh, famous trail and pilgrimage even when we are uh, uh, children. Um, I have, uh, I'm guiding now, I, I, El Camino, I guided more in the mountains, and I still guide in the mountains. Uh, Asturias, the region where I am from, and, uh, and the area uh, that uh, comes to El Camino in, in this uh, region. You can see in this map uh, one city to the north of El Camino, the line of El Camino called Oviedo. That's the, 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 the capital of Asturias. I was born very close. And I was guiding uh, in the mountains here for for, for, for uh, Sobek, uh, and also in the Pyrenees for many years. And eventually, because uh, of the interest of many of you in El Camino de Santiago, Mountain Sobek started uh, 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 preparing this trip a um, few years ago. And I was uh, the, uh, the one uh, choose also because my interest in uh, and my academic background uh, in in uh, history, and also my interest in in all in, in all the, the the history and the legends and the anthropology and sociology of of uh, wherever I have been guiding, but especially my homeland, my country, Spain. So um, most of you, I'm pretty sure, that have heard about uh, have heard have read uh, many of you for even for religious uh, 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 reasons. Catholic Christian background um, have heard about this uh, pilgrimage, this famous pilgrimage all along um, north central Spain coming from all Europe, a very old historical uh, pilgrimage. It started uh, the pilgrimage 12, more than 1200 years ago and um, because as you know uh, Santiago de Compostela, the city uh, to the very end of the western part of Spain um, is supposedly to be the, um, uh, the, the, the final uh, burial of uh, St. James, one of the closest apostles to uh, Jesus. Um, since the year 813, when the tomb of the apostle was discovered there, the, um, the kings of this area of northern Spain promoted the pilgrimage to uh, come um, to Santiago and it has become 
one of the uh, three most important uh, holy places in Christianity, uh, and especially in Catholic Church, uh, Jerusalem, um, uh, Rome, and Santiago de Compostela. So, uh, originally, uh, only for religious purposes, but eventually also to uh, to know the area and to make a journey, a spiritual journey, um, El Camino has been uh, attracting people since 1200 years ago. And we still hike El Camino uh, from all nationalities, from all um, the, 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 the countries of the world, not necessarily uh, only for uh, religious purposes. And um, that is why, um, in some cases, um, uh, organized trips uh, with guides to uh, show around is, uh, is, the, is the way for many people to come also because this trip is not only about uh, hiking, uh, it's also about history and culture and learning one country or about one country, about Spain. Um, you have here, I have, I always like to start with these uh, two symbols, two logos, uh, very old, the cross of Santiago, the red cross of, of the Order of Santiago, which you, when you hike through the through El Camino, you can always uh, see as a symbol marking. There are other marks, more modern. This one uh, is a, the logo of the Order of Santiago and is uh, more than 1,000 years old, or almost 1,000 years old, sorry. And, and the other one, is the uh, shell, the shell that identifies every other pilgrim um, that wants to be identified as a pilgrim when they hike. Most of us, when we hike, and I hike uh, El Camino uh, several times per year, obviously, um, I always like to uh, um, to take the to carry the, the the shell with me because it's a way to to identify as a pilgrim heading to Santiago. Um, as I said, um, El, uh, El Camino, the, the, the way to Santiago, is a, a lot of history. You can uh, uh, learn the history of Spain through El Camino, the history of Spain in the last, uh, actually in the last 2,000 years, because uh, the original or, or the original path is a Roman path uh, that was used eventually Mm, uh, during the Middle Ages by the pilgrims. But um, hiking El Camino is also uh, about learning uh, the history of Spain. And the history of Spain, uh, many of you probably uh, know a little, have been here before, is very, very deep. S Spain is one of the oldest countries in Europe in the sense of organized uh, with, with, with organized kingdoms, and um, and um, that is uh, that makes some of us, the Spaniards, um, uh, proud. Also, very um, uh, in Spain, Spain, Spain is a, a big country, the second biggest country in Western Europe after France, and we always uh, are proud of our history, and especially in in, in certain areas where we uh, identify a little more with uh, uh, parts of, uh, of, the, um, of the Spanish history when we uh, founded the, 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 the most important kingdoms and, and um, all the uh, grandeur of Spain because at some point, um, uh, like any other country in Europe, we had our, our, our highlights in history too. So, um, learning about uh, history is uh, along the hike is another of the purposes of this trip, learning about the history of Spain. But El Camino, the version of El Camino that 90% uh, of the pilgrims um, 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 hike today is what is called El Camino Frances. And this Camino Frances uh, starts in France. So, what most pilgrims hike today, um, heading to Santiago de Compostela, is the, uh, the hike that starts in uh, uh, France, 
uh, in the other side of the Pyrenees, uh, in a town called uh, San Jean-Pierre de Port, and is when we uh, meet that same day, the day right before the, the hike, and uh, we meet in, in, in Basque Country. San Jean-Pierre de Port, although it is in France, is in Basque Country. Uh, Basque Country has part of it in Spain, most of it what is considered Basque Country is in Spain, but uh, there is a big portion of what is considered Basque Country also in France. San Jean Pierre de Port is uh, one of the most famous cities or small cities in, uh, in the Basque uh, Pyrenees, uh, French side of the Pyrenees, and is where the El Camino starts. Many of you may remember if you have seen um, the movie, The Way, with Martin Sheen, that he starts right there, because most of the pilgrims start right there. Uh, and it's our starting day. We start, we, however, we start that morning in the beautiful uh, city and famous city, in the most famous city in northern Spain, Bilbao, where the um, famous uh, uh, Guggenheim Museum here in Spain is. And we, after visiting uh, another famous uh, Basque, uh, Basque city, San Sebastian, we pronounce it San Sebastian, you pronounce it more San Sebastian. Um, we, we go to uh, San Jean Pierre de Port to spend the night and the next day start the first uh, hike of, of, uh, of, of our version of El Camino. Um, we start in San Jean Pierre de Port and cross to the town, and that is a small town, of Roncesvalles, just in Spain. In um, the region of Spain, which is uh, the first uh, milestone of El Camino when pilgrims start in Spain, um, the region of Spain called Navarra, the town where we stay, where we reach is Roncesvalles, very small, 20 people living there, most of them priests and, uh, and monks, but um, um, lots of pilgrims reaching during the season every day in Roncesvalles. Roncesvalles is, has 10 or 12 buildings, no more than that, in the other side, in the south side of the, of the Pyrenees, we have started that day in the north side, hike for a few miles, climb to the pass, and then in a gradual uh, descent, we come down to Roncesvalles. And we spend the night there in a hotel, in the famous uh, monastery that was remodeled and converted into a hostel. There are hostels around too, but we spent the night in the Hotel de Roncesvalles, and um, uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful start. Everybody agrees uh, that uh, Roncesvalles, the first stages of the uh, Camino, and then the, the the end of El Camino, uh, getting to Santiago de Compostela, is the most uh, sentimental, spiritual, uh, historical part of the of the hike. Um, the next day, we hike again. We hike every day. We hike every day for a few hours, few miles, and then we uh, end in a, an important milestone, sometimes in small towns, other times in big cities. Uh, North Spain has not big cities as big as Madrid in central Spain or Barcelona in the east or the big cities in the south. Northern Spain, the cities, the biggest cities are around um, um, uh, 200,000, 150,000 people. Um, the first big city in our second, uh, uh, in our third day, the second hike, we reach the town or the city of Pamplona. Pamplona that everybody knows, especially in the States, uh, uh, there is a big relation between the city of Pamplona and uh, 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 the States through one of your uh, writers, Hemingway. Hemingway came to Pamplona and spent many, many days uh, partying uh, and uh, writing uh, about Spain here in Pamplona. Because, as many of you know too, Pamplona is the famous uh, place of the running of the bulls. And we stay in Pamplona. Um, the running of the bulls is in July. July is not a good time for 
eh, de, for, for el camino, because it's too hot. Um, uh, Pamplona is outrageous during the running of the bulls, but we see, we see the streets, we see, we visit during this afternoon that we spend in Pamplona. After hiking in the morning to the city, we um, see the, the streets and we and the environment, the, all the all the important uh, uh, items are around the um, not only the El, del Camino but also the the hike, the running of the bulls. Um, we leave Pamplona, which is in uh, the region of Navarra, and we cross into the biggest region of Spain and the longest part of El Camino that crosses that region, Castilla. Castilla, from where the word Castellano, our language, Sp Spanish language, as we, as it, it was born, uh, Castellano here in Castilla, is uh, long, long, uh, uh, long, long hikes or long days uh, in this part of, of uh, El Camino. We hike here several days. One of the most uh, amazing days, because of the city that we reach is the day we reach uh, or we go to Burgos, which was the historical capital of, of Castilla, that was, that is to say, the historical Middle Age capital of Spain, Burgos. And we have a long hike, if we want, that day, um, uh, 12 miles, mostly flat, mostly flat, not like the previous days that is uh, uh, some climbing and some descent. Um, we stop to uh, along, along the, the, this uh, journey to this section to Burgos for uh, for lunch in uh, small towns because Castilla is mostly rural except the main cities and we reach Burgos where where there is one of the uh, biggest cathedral Gothic cathedrals in Spain which is like to say in the world and uh, we stop and start using uh, historical uh, hotels or historical uh, hotels that have been um, built in historical hotels that have been built in historical buildings. Especially this one is in a monastery, in a Gothic monastery, very close to the cathedral. We crossed to see the cathedral that afternoon. And uh, we just spent uh, several hours uh, wandering around Burgos, adding uh, some more hiking to the, to the, to the hike of the day, um, although there are many, always many options. We stay in, in this, this particular place, it's a, it's a beautiful hotel, very modern hotel, um, into a very old uh, Gothic, 1,000 year old, um, uh, almost 1,000 year old building. Remodel that uh, is a lot of uh, the buildings in, in, in historical buildings in Spain have been remodeled and used as uh, uh, hotels. Um, the following day, day five of our hike, we hike in the morning again. That's a long hike. If 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 uh, the ones of you who come want to do the the whole thing that day, the whole hike in the morning, we get up a little earlier and we hike for 16 miles. Is the uh, historical section. We always go uh, day by day as it is described in a book that is considered to be the first guidebook in the world in history called, called the Codex Calix Calixtinus. The ones of you who are more familiarized with El Camino uh, have uh, read about it and is a, a, a book from uh, 11 from from uh, 1160 that describes how one of these pilgrims in during the middle ages who was a monk was doing a stage by stage which which all this, the places where where he was stopping we use uh, the natural or the uh, sections described in that book and as as our uh, uh, um, uh, sections to hike we hike in the morning like here from Boadilla del Camino in the middle of nowhere in Castilla to Carrión de los Condes, very small town in the middle of the plains of Spain, what you know as the plains of Spain. We hike several hours and then in the afternoon we reach this, uh, after lunch we reach this monastery that was also converted into a hotel, modern hotel, uh, 
not super fancy, but uh, really nice with all the facilities. Um, and um, we spend the afternoon here resting and also visiting uh, the historical places around this small town. Um, the next day uh, we go to Leon. Leon in Spain is another famous city related to El Camino and in north central Spain is uh, one of the most historical cities uh, with uh, such an importance um, and with beautiful buildings. We uh, hike in the morning again as it goes is that we hike in the morning and do some cultural activity in the afternoon and then uh, uh, right before the cultural activity the visiting of the Cathedral of Leon we go to uh, check in in our hotel which is a place uh, a magnificent building from late 1400s uh, remodeling to a hotel uh, in the system of uh, hotels owned by the government in Spain called Paradores Nacionales and this one here El Parador de San Marcos in Leon is one of the most uh, impressive of all the Paradores that by themselves are impressive. It's a, it's a net of 98, uh, almost 100 uh, different historical buildings from different times, from the Middle Ages to uh, 1800s, uh, um, that were uh, converted in the 60s, 1960s, by the Spanish government remodel into hotel hotels. Um, that day in Leon we have a like in Burgos, like in Pamplona, we have a guided uh, tour with a local guide, expert in the cathedrals, expert in the uh, particular city and the historical town. Leon is a Roman town founded in year 63. AD. So uh, a lot, lots of history for those of you in the afternoons who want a little more than, than hiking on only exercising, which by the way we exercise a lot too if we want, doing El Camino. Day 7, we, we just uh, um, go and hike in the morning from um, this uh, place close to Leon called Hospital de Orbigo, small city, a small town, it's not a city, the city is Leon, small town in the outskirts of Leon. We cross this uh, Roman bridge uh, called El Puente del, de la Frenta and uh, hike to Astorga, which is another famous city in Spain, very small, smaller than Leon, 10,000 people. We reach there after 11 miles. Along the El Camino, along our days, we can always hike as much as we want. If we want to hike uh, with the guides, all the uh, uh, natural section that we have prepared for that day, that we have selected that day, we do. If not, we have a, a, a van, a bus, and a bus with us to uh, support. So if some, some people decide that day not to hike, we can always uh, prepare um, um, something, uh, uh, getting uh, that person or that group in the um, next city, in this case Astorga, which is a, again a Roman founded city, and go to uh, visit in Astorga, for instance, there is a famous palace built by Gaudi, Gaudi, the famous uh, Catalonian architect Gaudi from Barcelona. He came as far as here, Leon, north west of Spain, to build um, um, a palace for the bishop of the area. So um, we go to Astorga and end uh, in uh, another uh, Parador, a little more modern, Parador de Villafranca del Bierzo, in this small region just below the mountains of Galicia, our next step, and um, to prepare for the last uh, stages into, uh, into, the, into the city of Santiago. Um, that day, the following day from Villafranca, we have another day of climbing. We have been so far, all these previous days, after we enter and cross the Pyrenees, uh, we have uh, pretty much flat 
long sections through Castilla. Uh, and the day we climb into Galicia, the region where Santiago de Compostela is, um, we just uh, have to climb for six miles, uh, but a very gentle ascent, almost not descent at all, just uh, briefly. And we have to hike uh, these six miles that uh, we always uh, organize in four hours, but it's a little less than four hours, to this small town, very small town again, 20, 25 people living in the town, but hundreds of pilgrims and tourists, tourists visiting the town, this first town in Galicia, called Ocebreiro, Ocebreiro um, where there is the oldest church in El Camino, uh, Santa Maria de Ocebreiro. And this church is from uh, 836. The big cathedrals that we have seen the previous days, Pamplona, Burgos, León, are cathedrals, the Gothic cathedral, the huge Gothic cathedrals, like all over Europe. Uh, but they are not as old as this one in this mountain, the mountain of Ocebreiro here in Lugo, where we have um, our lunch after, after the hike, and we keep on going to, to uh, a place um, to spend the night, the city of Lugo, which is uh, an important city, but very provincial, only in the in important in Galicia. It's not uh, very touristy, although it, it is very historical in, in, important in Spain because it has a Roman wall that is worth visiting. Not very well known outside Spain, but uh, is one of the highlights for many of us in the trip uh, uh, as we hike to to Santiago. And then uh, we have uh, our last hike to um, into Santiago de Compostela. We hike from a, another natural section of uh, El Camino as described in the uh, medieval guidebook uh, that all the pilgrims uh, uh, hike the same to enter Santiago. is a little more than, than uh, 13 miles from the town of Pedrozo to the city of Santiago de Compostela, where we hike to the very, uh, the very center of the city, where the cathedral is, it's called La Plaza del Obradoiro, and where our hotel is. And again, we use uh, one of these Paradores Nacionales. Um, the Parador Nacional in Santiago de Compostela is, was, was built, the hotel was built or remodeled, uh, from this building that is uh, 1500 uh, from from 1500s uh, a hotel that uh, uh, was built by the Catholic kings the most important uh, kings during the history of Spain after the Middle Ages uh, los reyes católicos Isabel and, Isabel y Fernando and we uh, spent the night there actually spent two nights there the night we arrive, uh, uh, we are there right corner the hotel, the Parador, is corner by corner, side by side, one minute from the cathedral. So that afternoon when we arrive there around 3.30, 4 o'clock, we always visit the cathedral because it's very close, although we have a guided tour the following day of uh, Santiago de Compostela. Uh, the following day, day 10 of our trip, we go to Finisterre. That is sort of a, in the historical pilgrimage that was always an extension. We are not hiking to Finisterre. We stay in Santiago de Compostela and with the bus we go to uh, uh, Finisterre just to uh, close the pilgrimage, the hike, the, 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 the trip, um, because uh, although Mm, uh, the, not all the pilgrims hike there and is not 100% related to the pilgrimage, is related to the burial of St. James there in, uh, in, in, in Compostela and most people like to visit uh, Finisterre. We uh, always go there in the morning, come back in the afternoon to Santiago Compostela where we are staying 
our second nine in Parador de in el Parador Nacional de Santiago, and we uh, have in the afternoon with our local guide there the uh, group visit in the um, um, in the Cathedral of Santiago where the tomb of Saint James is. We visit the tomb. Many of us uh, have the chance, if anybody wishes to attend the Pilgrim's Mass, which is a very a spiritual, emotional, more than a spiritual, emotional way to uh, finish El Camino for most pilgrims or visitors. And um, we always uh, have uh, quite a few hours to uh, enjoy the city of Santiago, uh, which is mainly historical. Last uh, uh, things, some people stay a little longer. Our trip ends the next day um, as a group. Uh, with the departures uh, from the uh, Santiago airport the next uh, the next morning some of the flights uh, there are flights to uh, to Madrid and to to Barcelona to Bilbao to some parts of Europe from Santiago it's an international airport so we can always uh, leave uh, that morning uh, after uh, visiting the previous day with a little detail, uh, Santiago de Compostela, the cathedral, and, and the city itself. So this is uh, what I can tell you uh, when it comes to my mind uh, now, but if, uh, if you have any questions or any um, particular details that you want to know on the trip or on El Camino, I could be talking uh, a little more about the Camino, but it's not the is is not the 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 the, the goal of this uh, presentation to go into the details. Thousands of years of history cannot be summarized in uh, in in a few minutes. But um, well, uh, you're welcome to to ask uh, any any questions that you want once my. Uh, Supervisor and Wood uh, 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 comes, <laughs> jumps and 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 and, and starts uh, uh, translating. Sorry for my English. <laughs> very your, English in, anyway. your English is perfect, Eric. And thank you thank so you much. much. Um, this has been really wonderful uh, to to hear about this trip. I actually had the pleasure. Um, this my name is Anne Wood. I'm the program director for Europe here at Mountain Travel Sobek. And I had the pleasure of doing this trip to El Camino de Santiago with Eric and his team in 2014. And it was perhaps one of uh, the most memorable and wonderful experiences that I've had, certainly um, with this company. And I very much recommend uh, uh, giving it a try. Um, one thing that really impressed me about this trip is even after full days of being in the outdoors, walking in some beautiful and very unique scenery, um, we still have uh, a lot more to the itinerary than just the walking journey itself. Um, we have guided tours of Pamplona and Burgos and Leon. Uh, we get guided tours of Romanesque and Gothic architecture along the way. Uh, many of the accommodations have spas, so if you're tired and you want to skip some of the evening events, you can treat yourself to a spa treatment along the way. And um, Eric is obviously extremely knowledgeable published author in, in history and the history of Spain. And he, he will actually give us at least three different lectures on the history of the Camino and the history of Spain along the way that are fascinating. So it's also a wonderful learning experience. And I think everyone appreciated that. Um, uh, another wonderful thing about this trip is obviously walking the Camino is very ambitious. This is a goal-oriented experience, but it's fully supported uh, with a comfortable bus and um, support vehicle. So at any point, if you want to skip a section of the journey or take a day off, that's always possible. So it's basically what we call the Camino without the suffering. <laughs> and I, I think that that's what sets uh, our experience apart from others. Um, like well, Eric's... We, we, uh, hike, we hike almost 100 miles. Right? Yes, so that's exactly. So <laughs> yeah, it is, it's quite an effort, and it really feels like even though we don't do the entire Camino, when we finish our journey, everybody finishes with that same feeling of accomplishment and achievement. Um, Eric, and we invite you to ask any questions that you have about the trip, and already I see that we have a few questions popping up. Um, one question uh, is, the trip is categorized moderate to strenuous. 
are the paths rocky is the primary reason for the strenuous classification attributed to the length, um, the distance, I, I would imagine. And uh, Eric, jump in if you want. I, we do rate this trip moderated, moderate to strenuous because if you do all of the walks, it is 100 miles, as Eric said. Um, it's quite a distance. Uh, some of the trails along the way are a little bit rocky, but actually the character of the walking for most of this journey is flat. Um, and I am actually surprised as someone who likes to hike uh, in the mountains a lot, how challenging walking on flat can be. Uh, you're, you're on uh, pavement and country roads, a little bit of everything along the way. Not a lot of rocks, uh, rocky trails like you'll see in the in the Pyrenees, um, because we're actually hiking and walking through farm countries, through small villages, um, up and over uh, uh, the low Pyrenees. Um, so it's mostly roads and well-groomed trails, but there are a couple areas where there are some um, rocky trails. Another question. Uh, how does it work if you only want to walk two to three hours per day? Um, so it, because of the nature of um, this journey, it goes through northern Spain and through towns and villages. We're never too far away from a place where our support vehicle can pick you up. So uh, there will be um, on each day uh, spots where we can um, pick folks up. Uh, I don't think there's a single day where that isn't possible. Uh, maybe, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, day two when we're hiking, uh, our first hike, that is through some forests over a, a small pass. That might be perhaps the most challenging day to stop midway, but uh, throughout most of but, this. But that is still possible. The day we cross from San Campia de Port, uh, we, it, it is still possible only hike uh, part of the, of the trail either the beginning or the end, uh, um, so there is always uh, uh, the possibility of skipping, uh, the a steep descent into Roncesvalles, the last hour and a half, so it, there are always, always, as you said, and every day, there are always um, uh, possibilities of skipping uh, or, or, or only, the possibility of only hiking two or three hours. Excellent. Another question. Um, with regards to the meals, are there options for veg vegetarian meals? And the answer to that is yes. Actually, um, we are able to accommodate just about any diet or any diet that we are aware of. Um, uh, and no shortage of, of very good food on this, this trip. Uh, next question. Do you do the passport stamps turn, excuse me, do you do the passport and stamps turn in yes, at the yes. cathedral, complete the pilgrimage. Mm, yes, we do the, the, the passport uh, every day. Uh, and at the beginning of the trip, we, uh, we give everybody uh, the passport. So we stamp it uh, in San Jean Pied de Port, our official starting. Uh, and then we go all the way. Um, everybody can be stamping. You know, there are lots of places. Usually the, the tradition is to start uh, in the morning, stamping in the place where you uh, start the hike, let's say Roncesvalles, the day two, in your hotel or in the pilgrim's office there, and then along the way in two or three hostels or bars or uh, places, and then eventually in Pamplona, when you reach Pamplona, you uh, hike, you you uh, stamp also in the uh, the end of the day, a stamp. The only thing is that um, we don't uh, hike the last uh, five days in Galicia, the last five previous days to Santiago. We only hike two of those days. And then um, uh, only if you uh, have the stamps of those last five days, you get what you probably are asking, uh, the Compostela, the certificate at the end. So like in most most uh, organized groups um, um, uh, this trip in this trip you cannot expect to get the, the the certificate at the end although you hike much more than necessary it's a it's a little complicated is is the bishop uh, the, the bishop ruling uh, the, the bishop of santiago rules all that uh, type of uh, but but you get all the stamps that you want the days you hike. 
and that's a, a really neat keepsake to, to uh, take home with you, actually. I still have mine. Um, another question, would it be more or less strenuous than the coast-to-coast -coast hike in northern England? <laughs> Um, actually, I think this trip, uh, both trips are similar in some aspects. They're both ambitious, long distance hiking and walking um, trips. It's hard to say what would be more challenging because it kind of depends on a few things like weather. Um, in northern England, one of the added challenges uh, to that long distance trek is that you get usually all kinds of weather and you tend to uh, find yourselves at various times walking through streams and mud and wet grass and and so on and so forth, um, but they're similar. Uh, this is 100 miles of walking on the Camino uh, versus uh, almost 200 miles in England. Both are vehicle supported. Um, so it, it really depends on what you find more challenging. I think they're probably pretty similar um, in that respect. The accommodations on uh, El Camino are very nice, very comfortable, uh, grand hotels and beautiful historic buildings. Um, in England, they tend to be a little bit more traditional inns, smaller accommodations along the way, um, but, but both very similar uh, in terms of physical challenge. So um, it looks like that's all the questions that we have for now. I wanted to um, just point out that we have three departures in 2017 and all three departures are guaranteed to go. So uh, we hope that you will join us. If you are, have any more questions about the trip or uh, how to sign up for the trip or prepare for the trip, I encourage you to call Rachel Mader. She is our regional specialist for Europe here at Mountain Travel Sobek. Um, there's her contact information right there on the screen. And Eric, go ahead and uh, let's move to a few other trips that you might consider um, if you are interested in the Camino or perhaps you've already done the Camino and you want something very similar. Again, the England Coast to Coast is uh, comparable and challenge and um, goal orientedness. We also have another trip in Spain uh, with. Eric and his team a frequently guide. Uh, it's called Across the Pyrenees. I did that trip as well some years ago. It's a, a challenging mountain hiking trip uh, that we've been offering for many, many years and also stays in Peridores along the way. And um, we also have a new trip in Croatia that you might consider. It's, uh, it, it is a hiking trip. Um, it's a, a week long, so if you are short on time, that's another option to, to consider if you want to get out full days of outdoors and, and hiking and um, being away from the internet for a little while. I <laughs> uh, hope you'll join us in Croatia. And um, so again, uh, feel, we welcome you to call us with more questions. And thank you so much for attending this webinar. Uh, we really hope you can join us on the Camino this year uh, or in years to come. Thank you.